<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be showing you all how you can set up OctoPrint or OctoPi on your Raspberry Pi. Now, in case you do not know what this is, this is a operating system that you can install on the Raspberry Pi, and this whole thing ends up connecting to your 3D printer that allows you to effortlessly and use some pretty powerful tools to print all of your stuff and control your printer over your network. Now, if you're wondering why you might want this, well, my printer, for example, has a micro SD card available that you can run files off of, and it also has a USB port. But I don't want to set aside an entire computer or laptop just to have for my 3D printer. So therefore, I'm able to access this using my network, and I just have the Raspberry Pi sitting there all the time because it has the web server. In fact, what you're seeing right here on screen is a print I have going right now. Once you have this finalized and set up, you should be able to access it through your browser. You would be able here to upload your G-code files, so the things that you've sliced already. If you don't want to do that manually, you can actually have them automatically slice for you, which I'll show you that as well too. Uh, depends and all that on what you want to do. And then of course, you know, you can actually control your printer through here. Here, I can set up all of my settings to heat it up properly. I can physically control it when it's not printing and you could see all these other things as well too There's quite a bit that you can do so not only it's powerful But it's very convenient and this is extremely easy to set up. So first off We're gonna need a few things. We're going to need to download the Octopi image We're going to need a program to install that image I will be using win 32 disk imager, which I'll put down below in the description I am on Windows obviously, but if you're not using Windows You're gonna have to use something similar to flash it to an SD card You'll need a of course, your Raspberry Pi, a way of getting it connected to your network, whether that be wired or wirelessly. I actually do a combination of both. For the initial setup, I do wire it in, but we're going to set it up to print wirelessly and connect onto your Wi-Fi network. And then you're also going to want, of course, you know, power and everything for that. Oh, and of course, a way of connecting this to your printer physically. So my printer uses a micro USB port, so I'm able to use that on my Raspberry Pi. So this is what you're going to want to do. All the links will be down below in the description. And first off, you want to go to the octopi.octoprint.org webpage. And from here, you will be able to download the latest version. All you have to do is click this right here, download Octopi, download the latest version, and then we can continue continue on. You want to go ahead, take your zip file, we're going to extract it over to our desktop right there and give it a little bit of time. And we're also going to open up this Win32 disk imager. Now if you are using this on Windows, you want to right click and run it as administrator. Once this pops up, I also recommend going over to this right here, which would be your files and folders and such, and figure out which drive you are flashing this over to. Now this right here, you don't even need 32 gigabytes of storage, I'm just using this micro SD card because it's sitting on my desk and convenient and it doesn't have anything of importance but you are going to be formatting it so make sure you're formatting the right drive as you can see my drive is i so i'm going to change this down to i and now we're going to grab the image file which you just click this folder once you select the image file it should load in right there and once you are sure that you have your device selected you will just want to go ahead and hit right hit yes right here and wait a little bit for it to flash over now once this is complete you want to go ahead and hit ok exit out of Win32 Disk Imager or whatever else you're using, and we're now going to actually open up our drive right here. And there's going to be one file you need to find. You need to find this octopi-network.txt. I'm going to right click and edit with Notepad++, and then right here, you want to go ahead and find which Wi-Fi network is going to work for you. Or if you're going to be using a wired network, you can check this and you're going to have to edit this. Now, I myself, I'm going to be using a WPA slash WPA2 secured network. So for this, all you need to do is there are a few comments you need to remove. You need to remove this comment, this comment, and this comment. So there should be these three lines on any single one of these should be available to use. This is going to be required to get onto the network. And then here you put your SSID. So I'll just call it SSID. And in here, you can go ahead and put your password. So password, for example, what you can do is save that and you're good to go on your SD card. Another thing, so this is for your slicing profile. Now you are going to have to, you don't have to do this, but if you want to have it automatically slice files for you and you have that all down, uh, it is recommended that you use Cura Engine. Now I'm using Cura 15.04, I believe. So the way you want to export that is you want to go ahead and open up Cura if you have that like myself. And once you have this open, if you have all your settings dialed in, you want to go to file 
and save profile. You're going to have to save this as an INI file. So I'll just call this profile YT for YouTube, save that and that is it. After that, you can exit out of there. Now that step is optional if you want to utilize that and you are using Cura. If you're using another type of engine, I'm sorry, I really only work with Cura, so I can't really help with that. But we have our INI file sitting right there in here, if I can click it, looking all pretty. So go ahead and just keep that to the side for now. We're gonna be utilizing it later if you choose to do that. Now what we need to do is we need to take this, safely eject our SD card, and now we are going to put it into our Raspberry Pi, hook it up to a network. So hook it up to recommended a wired network. And now we're going to tunnel into it via SSH. I'm going to be using PuTTY. The link will be down in the description for that as well too. But go ahead and use whatever your preferred SSH client is. However, if it's not PuTTY, I can't really help with that. Now at this point, we have our Raspberry Pi hooked up, powered, and on our network. I don't have it on my printer yet. You can hook it up if you want to, but you don't have to yet at least. What you're going to do right here is you're going to open up a terminal program such as putty and you want to go to octopi.local and you want to hit ok right there you want to wait a few seconds and then this should come up once this comes up you want to go ahead say yes and the default password is going to be well default login will be pi and the default password will be raspberry once you're in it should look like that now you want to type in here sudo raspi dash config hit enter and you want to do this first you want to go ahead and uh, expand your file system so this is going to utilize all the SD card that you have available you just want to hit OK right there or hit enter on it file system will be enlarged upon the next reboot you can hit OK right there and then aside from that if you want to you can change your user password which I'm just gonna keep the default stuff on here you can change your boot options uh, you can play around with pretty much everything you want to also if you ever want to use a camera on there you can go ahead and enable your camera which I will do just for giggles right there what I'm gonna do here is now there's nothing else I want to configure I'm just gonna go ahead go to finished it's gonna ask if you want to reboot now you can go ahead hit yes and it should disconnect you right here as it shows there so you can hit OK, wait probably a minute or so, and then you can reconnect. Now, as you can see, if you also look at these lines, you can see that there is the boot partition, which is 60 megabytes, and then there's the actual Linux partition, which is about 30 gigabytes, or yeah, uh, uh, just over 28 gigabytes, 29 gigabytes almost, uh, which is the rest of our storage that we have available. So you don't have to redo everything from here, but now that you see that everything is loaded up, you can go ahead and open up an internet browser. Now what you want to do once you have everything set up and you have your partitions size, resized, and all that good stuff, you want to take your Raspberry Pi and connect it to your printer, and you want to make sure it is on the network. Also turn on your printer. Once you have all that available, you want to go into a browser and go to octopi.local. It's going to bring this up right here, where if you want to read this and you can either enable or disable access control, do what you want to. I recommend keeping it enabled, so here I'm just going to call this YouTube and uh, set up something general. So right here, go ahead, set that up. You can do, you, of course, your own username and password. And now what we're going to do is we're going to log into that account. Once you have all that available, you should get something like this. If there's an update available, we can go ahead and hit update. I'm going to proceed and you just want to let it update. It might disconnect a few times, but just leave it as is until it finishes. Once everything is done, you should come to this page. You want to click reload now and wait for this to reload your web interface. Now, right here, this is where I asked you to import in your profile. We are going to need this. So this is the optional step. You don't have to do this, but if you want to have slicing automatically set up on here, you can do it pretty easily. So we're going to go ahead and import our profile that we exported previously. Go ahead, find your file, hit open right there. You can give it an identifier. I'm just going to call it profile, a name, profile, and YouTube. Again, it'd be better if you use your own stuff on there, of course. I'm just making this really general because it doesn't matter to me since this is just going to be doing, you know, a vanilla install for the example here but you can make it your default profile if you want to. You probably don't have a profile there already, but you can override, it doesn't matter. And then you can go ahead and hit confirm. Once that is done, you have your profile stored. So the slicing profile you used by default in Cura will now sit in here. Now we can hit finish. Once this is completed, you want to go ahead and go over to your connection. You want to find what printer you have. So this is my printer right here. I'm just gonna set the baud rate to auto. You really don't need to touch that. And then your profile. So I'm just using the profile one. I wanna save my connection settings and auto connect on startup. And we're just going to connect right there. And as you can see, once these things start being populated and such, that will mean that the printer is working, it is connected. 
Now, I don't have anything running on here, but those are just my uh, temperatures that are going on in my room. It says it's operational, so it's fine. And then you can go ahead and play around with everything. You control your printer right here. You can look at your G-code viewer when things are running, and you can see that there is communication going on between Octopi and the printer. Now, there's probably gonna be a lot of things that you want to change, such as right here, instead of entering your target every single time, you can actually change what the defaults are going to be. So to do all that, you can go to your settings and you can find them all in here. There's several different things that you can change. I think it's temperatures. This is one of them, for example, and I highly recommend running through these and changing what you need to specific to your printer. Another thing I'd highly recommend is when you're in your profiles right here, your printer profiles, you want to go ahead and go to your edit and print bed and you're going to want to edit this as is. Now I do have a heated bed and mine is not this big so I will have to change that if I was actually using this but I highly recommend running through these and checking these out at minimum. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you all how you can upload your files into here. So you can do it completely manually, you can create your folder, your files are going to show up here but there are two ways of doing it. First, if you have a G-code file which has already been sliced, you can go ahead, drag and drop it right there and as you can see, it's loaded. You can just print that while well, you can select it. It will load up all the information. And then if you want to, you can go ahead, go over to the G-Code viewer and everything will load up on there. I'm noticing this SD card is a little bit slower, so performance isn't the best, but as you can see, it shows up right there. Now, what if we want to have it slice automatically? Well, what you can do for that is, I'll go ahead and keep this open. You can take another file that is just an STL file, for example. I'm going to drag and drop it in here. And it's going to bring up the slicer where you can select all of your profiles and such and what you want to do. You can even say if you want to start printing immediately after or just select it for printing. I'll select it for printing. So I'm going to click slice. What it will do is it will upload, slice it for you. And then once it's done, it's going to give you the GCO file, which is printable. And it's going to give you the STL file, which you can either keep or delete. And as you can see, that's it right there. So it's that easy. From here, once you have your stuff selected and you have all your settings dialed in, what you need to do is you just need to go to temperature, set up everything, select your file, print it, and you're ready to rock at that point. So congratulations, you now have Octopi completely set up on your Raspberry Pi. Hopefully this was an easy tutorial to follow and something that could really help you out. This is actually my first 3D printing related tutorial, so if you enjoyed it, a like would very much be appreciated. If you didn't like it all that much because you just want to stick to 2D printers, a dislike is fine too. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone.